I'm Charlie Hopewell from Sunset Manufacturing. I actually think that we, act, and, and I've seen some statistics on this, that we actually have in manufacturing, we probably have greater cultural diversity than you do in many fields. As we're interfacing with clients, we're finding a larger and, and greater diversity of cultures and so forth that are actually both purchasing as well as running the companies that we're seeing and they're bringing different perspectives to their organization as well. So, so we have to remain cognizant of that. When we put ourselves in kind of this global manufacturing sphere, most of our clients are actually local to North America. The difficulty is, is that the choice that they have to manufacture the product is on a global scale. And it's so accessible now that it puts us in com comp direct competition with any company around the world. And we feel that more than ever. And then as far as the, the world of supply, materials and so forth, um, the world has opened up in that market as well. So many of the materials that we purchase um, can be sourced from anywhere in the world. And in some cases, our customers say, we actually cannot have materials from this particular region or so forth because of some various reasons, trade, and, trade restrictions and so forth. So we have to be conscious of that. Another challenge that we've had, which um, I didn't really allude to, which is really the challenge of finding qualified people. And to a large degree, manufacturing has been portrayed as a very kind of not a great place to work, you know, dirty, dusty, noisy, so forth. And it's not at all. There's a lot of technology and there's the creative spirit about it. So if you love to be creative, if you love to see things manifest in front of you, then manufacturing is a great field because you continually have things that reinforce what you really love. So whether I'm hiring a manufacturing person or somebody in our front office, the other part of that is uh, do what you love and love what you do, but also try to understand and know what that is. From a skills and aptitude standpoint, what we're looking for are students or people who understand um, the elements of mathematics, uh, science and science principles, because manufacturing is largely an experiment all the time. So you're putting a tool to a piece of metal and you expect something to occur, and when it doesn't, you need to be a problem solver to be able to work that through. And so I think from a cultural standpoint, we've got to get over the fact in the United States that manufacturing is again this dirty, grubby, physical kind of an environment. So I think the advice to parents is really key in to what your child and their chi your child's aptitudes are. If they like to create, don't automatically think that they have to be an engineer because what they can do is they can create within a manufacturing space as well. And I think that's one of the things we have to do. So the messages, I think, need to go to the parents. I think the messages also need to go to the educators and the administrators to say that a college track is not the only way to success. In fact, the more data that I see in regards to career technical education, those kids that are able to learn by doing and making something tend to be much more successful in their educational track, whatever it is, whether they say, I'm going to become a mechanic, or whether they say, I'm going to become a process engineer. They just understand better, and it makes more sense to them. So, so to the kids, that's a, I guess that's the other side, is to stay true to what your aptitude is.